Hey, it's Janet Johnson and Kimmy with Social Media Hangout Time. And we're here today with a guest, Ryan Hanley. And before we enter, I want to get a little bit of background to you about Ryan. We're very excited to have you, Ryan. And I want to talk a little bit. I, I do have your bio in front of me, and I'm going to read that through that. But I also want to... Uh, talk a little bit deeper about what uh, some things that have just happened recently that I happened to catch because I read through the internet. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so let's talk first about your background. Um, you are the founder of Hanley Media Lab, which obviously is after your last name, yep. an advanced content marketing agency helping companies grow their audience to grow their business. You're the producer of Content Warfare Podcasts, so you have your own podcast. And that is one of the iTunes most downloaded content marketing podcasts for over two years. Congratulations on that, Thank Ryan. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thanks, Kimmy. And he's also the author of Content Warfare. So, and that's Content Warfare, How to Find Your Audience, Tell Your Story, and Win the Battle for Attention. And so welcome, Ryan, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, It's been a... Uh... It, it's. I was introduced to you uh, from Dino Dogan, and he had great things to say about the show, so I'm very excited. Oh, fun, fun. fun. Yeah, he had, we had a fun time with Ryan. Yeah, we definitely had a fun time with Dino. It was great. Uh, and we always start off the show, Kimmy likes to ask a little fun off, off yeah, the question. Yeah, you know, just like I asked Dino, hey, have you ever been interviewed by a puppet before? This is, I'm, I'm popping my puppet interview cherry right now. This is awesome! <laughs> Well, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. Come with me. We, we, like, we liked one. One answer was many times, but not a real puppet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. That's much. That's much cheekier than my response. I, I enjoy that too. I want to know what people are gonna say. So. So, and then I also want to start out by congratulating you and telling everyone in our audience about your latest uh, achievement, I guess we could call it. Uh, you made it, and I know, I'm not sure how this worked exactly, but it's it was called the Top 70 Up-and-Coming Social Media Experts, and you were on that list. So, congratulations for making that list, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um... Mark Schaefer is, you know, I've been part of his community. I've written for him before, uh, and I comment on his blog all the time. I read it. I think he really thinks forward, and uh, it was an honor. I had no idea, actually, until I started seeing myself getting tagged in posts and stuff, and uh, it was a complete honor and a surprise and uh, very pleasant. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Um, well, and you do, you focus on content marketing, so let's start out by telling us a little bit about your show, uh, the podcast that you had for two years. That's a long time. Yeah, so actually I started Content Warfare as a podcast only in August of 2012 on a complete whim. Uh, just one day, I, you know, I've been reading stuff, people have been saying podcasts are, you know, coming, they're a new thing, you really uh, should should think about uh, starting one if it, if it fits your needs. So I literally just turned my mic on, recorded into Audacity, hit, you know, cl finished it, packaged it up, and then spent the next three hours figuring out how to get it onto iTunes. No launch, nothing. And um, <laughs> I've spent the last two two years kind of build, you know, because the whole thing with podcasting, as you guys probably know, is it's all about the launch and you get the audience and then and all this stuff. So uh, I have really built this thing from like 10 listeners the first day to uh, what it is today, which is which is thankfully bigger than 10 listeners. <laughs> um, but about, uh, let's see, we're on episode 84 will be this week. Joanne Penn is on. Um, but uh, let's see, episode 61, I transitioned it from an audio-only kind of traditional podcast to a live Google Hangout on air where we have a live audience and it's video and uh, adds all these new crazy dynamics and we use comment trackers so we bring audience questions in and it gives uh, uh, a really new like, fresh feel to the show. People can who listen to the show can actually then attend a Hangout and ask questions of, an, of, a, of a guest if they're interested in chatting with that guest and uh, it, it's been a really, really fun experience and something I would never give up. I could give up writing and other things I do. I could never give up the, the show. I love it. How long have you been doing the live? live so it's, it was 61, so that's about 20 episodes, uh, maybe about four or five months ago. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been to be honest with you, um, not that this is this isn't like tactic driven or whatever, but sure. it has uh, um, almost tripled the number of downloads that I get on my podcast since I added this new feature. I think people just like the kind of having audience members come in and sometimes they say the craziest things and you bring their comments in and that like, you know, because an interview is going one way and then all of a sudden an audience member drops some like bomb into the conversation and then it takes the conversation a whole nother way and people really seem to enjoy that. Uh, at least uh, my audience and the people who come yeah. to my show enjoy that and uh, yeah. it's, so it's been a lot of fun. Challenging whole, at times, but fun. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole new level of engagement. You know, you really like to put the face with the voice. And yes. so once you've got that, then it's easier to listen, too. Yeah, you know, it's 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 funny. Uh, people either like the YouTube, because obviously this is captured in a YouTube video, as you guys know, mm -hmm. since we're doing this. But uh, people either like the YouTube video, and they like to watch the video, or they like to listen to the podcast. And there's really, like, two camps. Um and it all comes down to taste, but I, I think it's nice to be able to give your audience that that uh, their preferred way, providing them with their preferred way. I'd love to do a transcript, but uh, I would go broke transcribing hour-long shows every week. Uh, so um, I may do transcripts at some point, but um, if you could offer reading, video, and audio, well, then there's not really too many more ways to consume your content. Mm -hmm. We do transcribe ours, but it's a messy transcript. And that's, yeah, it's, we, we, we basically tell people, yes, it is not a, you know, this isn't a clean blog post. It's a transcribe. So, you yeah. know, if you want to read it, it's, it's exactly verbiage of the show. So we don't clean it up. But, yeah. but at least we have it, you know, yeah, and we have nice. it available. Mm -hmm. It's awesome that you provide your audience with that. Mm -hmm, exactly. Well, and we've been looking at moving ours live, but, you know, Kimmy's so shy that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. It's just my color of my hair can't change too often. <laughs> you know, it, I felt, with the live version, I think you basically just have to say to yourself, things are going to go wrong. Like, they're, they're, it's, it cannot be perfect, and it won't be perfect. I had a show the other day. I was talking to Sue B. Zimmerman, uh, the Instagram uh, expert. Yeah. I don't know if you've had her on the show. If you haven't, you should. She's a uh, dynamo. She's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, but she, uh, something happened with her connection, and for five minutes... Boom, she was gone. Live oh. show. We're, we're 20 minutes in, and she's gone. Now, I know that she's working to get back because um, we discussed that before the show goes live. But um, for five minutes, I just had to f I had to fill dead air by myself. <laughs> so I just started talking to the audience, and I'm like, if you have any questions, start. So people started, really got involved. And I actually did not lose. Uh, and, and this is just a testament to how amazing people are and when you really grow an audience. I did not lose one person despite five minutes of just me into the camera talking nonsense. Um, oh, that's awesome. And, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun. But that thing, that stuff happens. Yeah, you got to be able to wing it there. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, now you are – let's talk a little bit about uh, the storytelling for business because – we, our target audience is, for this show, is the small business owner, the Kimmy, mm -hmm. the salon owner, the, the entrepreneur, maybe a network marketer, maybe, you know, the, on, entre, any entrepreneur, coaches, that kind of thing. And so, mm -hmm. so you mentioned um, the storytelling in content marketing, which mm -hmm. obviously is so important. Can you expand a little bit on the, what, what you'd suggest for small business owners with, with the storytelling? Yeah, so uh, a big a big part of my philosophy is around the idea of capturing attention, right? But the right kind of attention. It's easy to run, you know. Traditional traditional marketing is based all on uh, attention. You know, we're gonna run ads, we're gonna put them in newspapers, we're gonna put them on TV, we're gonna interrupt people and capture their attention for a brief period of time. But there, there's a missing piece to that, and it's the idea of trust, right? So when attention is married with trust, that's when you start to um, you know, that's when the magic starts to happen. So when someone is going to give you their time and they're also going to trust what you're saying and then when you say to them, I also have this product and if you want to take our relationship further, here it is, people say yes to that when uh, you've, they have your attention or you have their attention and they trust you. So storytelling uh, from, from all the work I've done, I've worked in a small business for seven years now. I was a boots on the ground. We didn't get too much into my background, but uh, mm -hmm. I was a boots on the ground producer for five and a half years uh, for an independent insurance agency. So I'm out there digging up business every day doing the small business thing. It's a 15 person independent insurance agency. Um, and then about two years ago, I got, I 
started to drive so much revenue through the digital space that uh, I transitioned to director of marketing at that same agency um, and just recently I transitioned out onto my own and they're now a client of mine but I've lived the small business life for, for seven years and understand uh, how, to, how, to, how to connect with people and it really comes down to your story right um, small businesses cannot out attention their large business competitors because they're they're not just competing against the other small businesses in their town they're competing against in our case you know so we're a small independent insurance agency we're competing against Geico one of the largest ad spends in the entire world for any product um, you know we're competing against State Farm all these mega companies and they're all getting people's attention so how does the Murray Group Insurance Services this 15 person agency make a dent you know start to grow our business and the answer is what the, the attention that we are able to capture, we're marrying that with trust through telling our story. So what is it about us? Well, we're all about the the idea of you know kind of the family values type of thing. We take care of people. We we usher them through the through the office. You're you're getting a live human on the first or second call. We're calling people back. We're going and meeting with them at their house. And then in our marketing, what that means is we're not just talking about our products or services. We're talking about why we do business. Um, so we recently just launched a video where um, with my uh, agency, the agency owner, I wrote a two minute script with him about uh, what it has meant to be in business for 40 years because this is the 40th year of the agency. And it just was very heartfelt. It was about bringing his kids into the business because all three of his kids now work here. And that story um, went crazy. We got our highest click-through rate on our email list, our highest open rate on Facebook. We had um, over five, over 3,000 people organically view it, and then we did a little paid advertising because we saw that people were really connecting with it, and that brought in uh, even larger numbers. And it's really that story piece that takes people to the next level. Um, that's a very long-winded answer. No, that, that was, helps. you know what? You told a story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's about lifestyle. People really connect with people when they start sharing about their life and what they mm -hmm. do every day because then it's something they can relate to. And an insurance agent, it is true. They know so much more about the families next door, and it's a lot easier to do business if you can put a face to it. Well, Kimmy, think about uh, your hair salon, right? So yep. when you're talking about so, – so you cut hair. There are millions of people that cut hair, and at its at its at its baseline, it's a commodity service. I want a high end tight with a two on the sides and a scissor cut on top. Leave the front a little longer and round the corners, right? Like there are a million people that can put that haircut together. Right. However, I go to the same barber every single time because I know you know from sitting there. I went in once. She was very nice. She was telling me about her kids. We connected. She's from the same town. You know, I know. Uh, you know, she's like slightly skewed towards the conservative side of politics, which whether you agree or not is just kind of funny because she's like this petite little thing, so you wouldn't imagine it. And, and you know, she's quirky, and and I really enjoy her. And it is through her kind of telling me the behind the scenes story of why she's you know over time getting why she became a barber, why is she cutting hair in this shop, you know, and all this stuff that now, even if she jacked her rates up ten dollars a cut, I would still go to her because. It, we we will will overpay if we feel like we're connected to the thing. We will overpay. So it, price is only an issue if you're doing if if people are not connected to you. And then there's a chance that those people aren't your best consumer anyway. So uh, it's a different way of looking at business. It takes a huge leap of faith because we want to just we want to believe that people only buy on price. But it's just statistically not true uh, that people buy on price. They buy with what they believe. Yes, that's absolutely right. And it is. And it's you become family. In our salon you become family. Heck, we take selfies together and post them yeah, all over Facebook. That's awesome. That that's really good content too, because all right, so let's let's take that example farther. So you're taking selfies with people. The people who don't currently do business with you, who see you, smile on your face, great haircut on your client, they're going, Wow, like that seems like a really cool experience and I really like that haircut. And I would love to be happy like that person who's standing next to Kimmy. So they immediately put themselves into that image and say, would I like to be in that image? And if the answer is yes, the next time they need a cut, there's a much better chance that they take a swing on your shop if they've never been there before versus where they've normally gone because 
because uh, they, they want to experience that thing. Um, where their other cut, they just get a cut and they walk out and that's fine. Um, you know, now, you know, if we're going to get super technical, now when you do run, so now you have this side where you're telling your story, telling your story. Now you do run a deal or you do run a, uh, um, oh, what are those emails with the discounts that come in all the time? Uh, I can't remember the name. Like matter. a coupon? Or like a coupon. Now you do run a coupon. Mm-hmm. Now that little push, because they've already made that connection, is what gets them in the door and now they stay. Right. Uh, so that's kind of how you, you, you weave this whole storytelling thing in together. It's not, you know, Tolkien or, you know, Game of Thrones or something. You know, when we talk storytelling, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the beliefs, the understanding, the, the culture of, of your business and who you are. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I work with a lot of orthos and dentists. I love it. And everybody, they just posted a picture last week. I keep saying post pictures of your office, people in your office more. They posted one last week. Their average posts get a few clicks here and there, you know, likes and that kind of thing. This one had, I think, 50-plus likes on it within a couple hours because it was them. Yeah. And so it was putting the people that are actually in that office, you know, and, and showing who they are and bringing out their personalities. So expand on it with the personality piece of things, you know, what with the content marketing. How, how would you suggest bringing your personality into things, too? So what uh, I'll tell you a campaign we recently did for the insurance agency, and I'm just going to stick with that example because sure. we, we already started with it. Um, so uh, we had neglected our Facebook page because we were doing a couple other things. We were doing some, we were doing a lot of video work, a lot of blog work, and uh, I have mixed emotions about Facebook, but uh, for local business, you have to be there. Um, so mm-hmm. but not have to. You, you know, you, you seriously have to consider. I hate talking in absolutes. Um, so uh, we wanted to re-engage our Facebook community. So we did something called Meet Meet the Murray Group. And what I did was I went to every employee to their workstation and took pictures of them while they were working, not posed, while they were in their work. And I have a Canon DSLR whatever camera and I fancy myself like a quasi amateur photographer or whatever and <laughs> plus I have like all these programs that I can make them look like the pictures are nicer than they are but the point is uh, I got them in their in their like native environment so hands yeah. on the keyboard hand, phone up to the ear you know one of our, one of our um, I say R I'm not I'm still in it's only been a month since I stepped out of work sure. so I still say R um one of the producers stands and talks on the phone all the time. And people don't realize that when he talks on the phone, 90% of the time he's on his feet. So I took a picture of him doing that. And then each day on Facebook for however many weeks it was, 15 weeks, um, we posted a picture and then just, just one sentence. Scott, you know, grew up on Taberton Mountain and, you know, loves the snow because it gets 15 more inches than the rest of the town. We're in upstate New York. Um, and you know, just little tidbits about the person. Nothing like intimate, like that you wouldn't want shared, but just little bits and pieces of the person's life that gives people a little better feel. You know, there, there's a good chance that if you're talking to Scott on the phone today, he's standing because that's what he does. He likes to talk on the phone and stand. And this this campaign went nuts. I mean, people just loved it, and they reference it. You know, this was probably six months ago. They they reference it when they come in. So it's. These little tiny things, like that didn't take me much time. I went down, 15 minutes, snap, 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 a little bit of editing, and then posting them out with some little tidbits about their life. And uh, that's what people want to know because they, they can't get that from the big box. And the people who connect yeah. with the big box are going to go there. But everybody else, and, and I'm telling you, it's the majority of people, um, there's been enough studies done. They want that. They want to connect. We just don't give it to them. We're just really bad at giving it to them. Well, it's, yeah, it's not like the yellow pages anymore where you could just put an ad in the paper and, yeah. and hide behind the scenes. I mean, that's AAA why... AAA 1 plus yeah. uh, towing. AAA 1 plus payroll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so as for Kimmy, she's, that's why she does these selfies and those, those types of things and gets out there in the social media. Correct, Kimmy? And that's why you're on this podcast today. Yep. You know? Yep. That's something that's, uh, I think it's really needed in the marketplace, but I do find that some of the clients that I work with personally have been afraid to do that. Something like what you just talked about, a lot of, you know, they they, they don't want to get their personal lives involved, especially Mm -hmm. when it's a large office. 
So I think the, the key there is to find the things that are not personal life that they can still share that are intimate, right? So like John the dentist likes the Mets. There's a million things you can do with that that, you know, that's not intimate knowledge. No one's not going to get their teeth cleaned from him or get their tooth pulled because he's a Mets sure. fan. But what it does do is it can spur some conversation around that. And not everything can be sports-related because you are uh, ostracizing a certain percent of the population who isn't interested in sports, but it does. It gives you a little piece. Why is he a Mets fan? Why, you know, why isn't he a Yankees fan or a Red Sox fan or a Phillies fan? You know, because they're all kind of clumped in the same part of the, the part of the, um, the area. So it little tiny things like that, you know, and then... Uh, did you know that he pulled his first tooth in 1979 and it was a molar and, you know, and all this and he still has it in a little baggie? And, like, little things like that, I think, you, it's really trying to dig into because I, I, I agree with you and I, and I feel your pain. It, people, it's hard if it doesn't come natural, it's hard to give that out because they're like, what if someone doesn't like me? And, mm -hmm. and here's the rub on that, right? So here's the rub. When you start to share who you are as a person, two things are going to happen. One, people are going to leave because they're not going to connect with you. Two, people are going to love you and never leave you. So what happens is you start to create this automatic filter where those clients that, that you are always kind of like a little off with, they are going to leave because they're going to be like, ah, I don't really like this. I just, you know, but the clients that are into you, they are going to love you and never leave. So what you do is maybe you lose some of the people who you didn't really want anyways, but what you get is this group of people who just are, are talk about you all the time and oh, I go in and my dentist has always got this cool stat about baseball or uh, you know this cool presidential thing. He's really into the presidents. And, it, and it's little things like that that at around a campfire or at a dinner table – are mentioned that make the person who hears it go, geez, I, I never get anything like that from my dentist. He's like really boring or she, her breast stinks and I don't really like going there anyways. And they decide to move. And um, so there is that kind of thing where you start to get this natural filter on who your clients are. You know, too, I think with salespeople, a lot of times if they could just focus on those little things, they would generate more sales because you're not having people run away from you out of fear of, oh, God, he's going to pitch me on something. Yeah. And so when you learn a little bit about that person, it attracts people to them. They'll run across the room to say, hey, Kimmy, what are you doing? I love that new cut you did on so-and-so's hair. Instead of me going out, oh, my gosh, Susie, you need a haircut. <laughs> 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 I know it's a funny analogy, but it's real because I run away from people when they come in. That would be all they want to do is that. pitch me. You should have a business card that just says, "You need a haircut, call Kimmy," and then you just hand it to people. <laughs> I should. <laughs> that would be great marketing. No, what you're talking about is the difference between interruptions and inbound, right? So those yeah. are the two very common, almost overused phrases in marketing today. But you're talking about a, a shift in. I'm going to, and, and this goes back to our original discussion about attention when we were talking um, at the beginning of the show. You can get attention, right? So you walking around with, you know, bumping into people and going, hey, you need a haircut? Call Kimmy. That's interrupting their lives. And yes, for a second, you're going to get their attention, but you're not building any trust. Through the selfies, what you're doing is it's social proof, right? So that person is, yeah. is so yeah. happy with their haircut that they're allowing you to take their picture and share it on social media. That's huge. And plus, it's saying, look what you're going to get. This is what you're going to get if you're going to come to me. And look how happy this person is. And, um, you know, that kind of thing is inbound. So now people are deciding that they want you and a haircut from you before they ever meet you. And that's an incredibly powerful thing. And it reduces the sales cycle. It reduces your stress. It makes you happier as a business owner. And if you're happier as a business owner, you're spending more time finding new cool cuts, new ways to style people's hair, new colors, and, and just doing your work better because you're happier with what you're doing. You're not worried about bumping into people and telling them their hair looks like crap. Yep, absolutely. And another spin-off on that is kind of like you were just saying, you know, you have to, that fear of people not liking you, or that fear of losing potential clients, that is something that I think everybody has a fear of. I've heard of people, businesses saying, I don't want to be on social media because what if somebody says something bad? You know, that's something that they don't want to hear the negative side of things. And I think that's something that I love what you said and how it's, 
it's hard to you've got to realize it's going to happen. It's going to happen no yeah. matter what. It's happening right now. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. It's like it, to to think that people sitting here are are not talking negative about your business no matter what you do is like ostrich in the sand kind of stuff, right? Like how egocentric are you to believe that there is no one out there talking negatively about your business? It happens every day. The difference is that on social media, and this is, so one, on social media, it feels more public because you actually get to hear it. It's not just John telling Sally at work and it's over. It's John telling Sally on Facebook and other people can see it. So there is that piece. But the, the business owners that really get it and that are really interested in building these deeper relationships, they see it as an opportunity to step in and correct the problem, one, because if you have 50 people talking negatively about your business and right now you don't know, you're still doing that thing and that number is becoming 51, 52, 53. If you see 50 people talking about your business negatively on Facebook, first of all, you can step in and try to help and quell that. Secondly, you can adjust your business to stop those things from happening. So it could be that you know uh, Steve, the guy who answers the phone, coughs and hacks into the phone and is really rude. And he only does it when you're out of the office because you know he just got done smoking cigarettes and he doesn't you know and, and all this you know and all this stuff you don't know. And then, but when you're in the office, he's Mr. Pep. Well, if you see that on Facebook, you can you can address the issue and fix the issue. Um, I, I think the major problem is that most small business owners, and myself included, all of us included, we're very ego driven, right? Like we own the business, our business is great, and we don't even want to hear like earmuffs to the fact that something could be wrong. Um, but people are talking negatively about your business, every business. Uh, it's just in Facebook you have a chance to actually do something about it. Or I, I'm using Facebook, but in social media you have a chance yeah. to do something about it. Yeah, yeah, and any of them you can respond and, and yeah. get back to them. And you know, it's something that you know we we like to focus on the attention piece here with our, with our show, like just being unique and different. You know, when we when we went out and, and Kimmy came on board. Now, fortunately, everybody loves you, Kimmy, but you Thank know. You. We took, we took the chance, we took the little risk that, you know what, some people might not resonate with a puppet. You know, that's a, that's a big risk. And but, but to me, if somebody can't handle Kimmy the puppet, then I don't really want to work with them anyway. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of diluting my, the audience. Does that make sense? You're not so, diluting the audience. You're filtering the audience filter, for the people you, that believe in you, right? So that that's really what it is. I mean, is that first of all, there is this, you know, there is this belief that somehow you could obtain 100 percent of the of the of the people that are available to listen to your show, right? Like, like that's like somewhere in our mind, we're like everyone could possibly listen to our show, and that's just not going to happen. So when you when you come down from that ledge, then it makes sense that some people will like you, some people won't, some people will be indifferent, and by adding Kimmy and kind of the unique flavor that it gives to your show, you're going to be people are going to be very invested. You know, there's going to be this portion of people who just love this. They think it's cheeky and unique and fun, and they love the fact that there's like this same small business example over and over and over with every guest, and uh, that makes it very relatable. And um, and all you're really doing is filtering it down to your core audience, the people who, when you go to offer a product or a book or whatever you want to do, those are the people that will stand up and support you. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. So that's that's one example. But I love it that I do think that any business really needs to look at that that piece when they're when they're storytelling too is just you know what's going to make them stand out differently with their stories. So I love I love that example. I like to call it digitizing the soul of your business. That's my hmm. little phrase. Oh, that's for that. a good phrase. Yep. Yeah, I like digitizing that. Digitizing the soul of your business. Ooh, we're going to have to use that quote, Kimmy. <laughs> 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 we do a lot of quote images. So we do a lot use of away. images from the, yeah. Use away. <laughs> we'll give you credit, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's, go ahead, Kimmy. I was going to say, Ryan, if you could share a little bit, speaking of books, we were talking about that. Do you have one coming out, I hear? Yes, well, so actually, um, at, I, let me back up just a little bit because I think it's kind of a cool story and I hope it doesn't bore you guys but I'll be very brief. Uh, so I've been writing for a very long time. I found I found writing about six years ago as a way to talk about my insurance business and that transitioned into talking about marketing and personal development 
and that's kind of where my life is today. So it's been this long process. But this book uh, has been in me for about two years, and I've been writing down thoughts and pulling out resources. But it was kind of like one of those procrastination things, right? Like, is it, uh, you know, someday, I was still constantly telling people, I'm going to be this writer, I'm going to be this writer, and it just was never materializing. And um, a guy by the name of Tom Morcus, who is a um, really, really amazing guy, uh, would be another great uh, guest for your show. He w you guys would love him. Uh, he he's very cool, very unique. He recommended another man by the name of Guy Vincent, who is the founder of a platform called Publishizer, which is a crowdfunding platform for authors in particular. Right, so helps authors take make their project a reality through uh, the power of crowdfunding, and it's only for authors. And this and he has a publisher's background, so he basically in the last three months has taken this kind of idea that was just out in the ether and helped me drill it all the way down to yesterday we launched our crowdfunding campaign um, 20 percent funded on the first day which was absolutely amazing uh, community has just been fantastic and uh, humbled honored overwhelmed that I, I, I could all the superlatives that go along with that I just uh, but it, the book is how to found your audience tell your story and win the battle for attention and it's it's a lot of what we've talked about today it's mm -hmm. it's really um, I, I think that too many businesses focus on story first audience second and my personal belief from all my experience and a lot of the the case studies that I pulled for the book and research that I did is that uh, it's it's audience first it's build the audience become part of an audience become part of a community first uh, get the trust first and then start to work on gathering the attention to what you do because trust is the harder thing, right? Attention is the easy thing. Part of the f crowdfunding campaign, I'm running a Facebook ad around the, the video trailer, right? That's attention. That's easy. But that attention wouldn't work, would mean nothing if there wasn't trust attached to it. So I'm only running the Facebook ad to people who have know my brand and you know all the things that go along with Facebook ads. But um, so it's build trust first through the process of digitizing the soul of your business, uh, understanding who the connected generation are, and and then tell your story. And in that process is how you kind of win the battle for attention online, which is these people that stick um, and ultimately become. Uh, you know, just build and build and build on on your your audience, your brand. Uh, so that's kind of the the basic philosophy behind what the book is all about. Is it out right now? It, so right now, I have uh, just a crowdfunding campaign. You can download a free chapter, which is actually six thousand words. So it's about wow. almost twelve percent of the book. So you get a very good feel of what the book is all about. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to just release something with. I mean, I have the book almost written. Right now it's in like the massaging process of yeah. making it flow. Uh, so you can download a, a free uh, section of the book. It's, it's about 11% to so get a really good feel for what the book is about. I have a video trailer and um, you can you can check the page out and, and get a feel for what it is and, and uh, what the process is. And I call it activating my audience because if I can't raise the money I need to make the book that I want, all the money goes to expenses, um, uh, make the book that I want, then I know that it probably isn't a book worth writing. And um, that's why I decided to do it this way versus going and getting. A, I, I could have gotten a publisher because um, I have a large enough audience. To, you know, really all publishers look for is how many Twitter followers you have and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I wanted to do it this way, and uh, it's been incredible, really. I mean, I think it'll be a better product for owning every step of it and having my audience own these steps. I mean, uh, my audience has helped me choose the book cover. My audience is beta readers. They're helping me choose inter internal illustrations. They're helping me choose all these different things um, and, and really make it, it's not, I don't refer to it as my book, it's, it's our book. It's the people who are, are believe in kind of this idea uh, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's stressful, nice. it's stressful as hell, but, but, <laughs> but fun. <laughs> uh, well, what's that link to get the... If you go to Content Warfare Book dot com contentwarfarebook.com uh, that takes you right to the crowdfunding campaign and if someone's watching this later that will end up being the the page where you can order the book once it's done and stuff too okay. so okay. Uh, that that link will always work okay perfect and we're on so social media hangout time.com this is going to be uh, forward slash 20 because this is show yeah. 20 so we will also amazing. have that congratulations thank you, thank you. thanks <laughs> 
And so we will also put that in the notes too. So we will uh, have I appreciate all the that very much. that we talked about here. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh, also talk about one thing I always want to give our audience is action steps. And, mm -hmm. and you know, you could feed off of what you were just talking about, yep. like the trust and the storytelling. But what would you say is something pretty simple that they could do in the next 24 hours? So I would say the very first thing, if we're, if we're building on this idea of kind of attention and trust and digitizing the soul of your business, the very first thing that I would do is think back to day one, right? So day one, you flip the lights on, you turned your computer on, whatever you did to start your business on that day, what, like, what did you, why were you doing that? What was the why of that action? I think that we lose that and it's easy to lose it because we get into the grind of working with the clients, processing the products, doing the marketing, doing the accounting, all the things, we lose the why. So this is like, go back to like the Simon Sinek why of, of day number one and write that down. Hmm. Here's step, two steps, two steps. Now email like 10 or 15 customers and ask them why they think that you're in business. The gap is where is where the work that you need to do, right? So the gap and those two answers is the work that you need to do. That's what you need to fill. And when you can get your audience, your why, and your audience's why connected, they don't have to be the same. You don't have to come all the way to your audience. Your audience doesn't have to come all the way back to you. But when you can get them to be the same thing, now you're cooking with gasoline. Great idea. Never heard that concept before, but that's a great idea. Oh, thanks so much, Kimmy. And Kimmy, let's have you wrap it up. Go ahead and wrap it up. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show today, Ryan. So this is Kimmy, the social media puppet, Janity Johnson, and Ryan Hanley. So, Ryan, can we go to ryanhanley.com to connect with you, or where would you like people to connect? Ryanhanley.com is perfect. Perfect. Okay. All thanks right, thanks for coming on, Ryan. Have a good one. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Kimmy. A lot of fun.